Um, Robin is going to pop in at when she gets yeah. done. Okay. And Gary is supposed to be doing it. That he would try to do it. Okay. But he accepted my invitation at like. Um, and I don't depend on if he's got a student. If he had a student walk in. Twelve forty-one. So. Okay. I guess. So have you had a chance to look at the survey tab? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. So then we've all done that. So. I was trying, when I put it together, I was trying to do the who, what, when, where, why, how questions. And I looked at some data, or some other surveys from like Penn State, um, just to see what kind of questions they were asking, but then also to keep it in the smaller, you know, so we can fit on a piece of paper front and back if we decide to go. Well, and then there might be somebody who wants to deliver it by paper. Yeah, I'm sure that there would be. I would, I would prefer it not, because then someone has to put it in. Right. But and these are just screenshots that I captured, because you can't print it on the whatever version the college has. Can you print on that one? Well, I don't know if it... We're not at the elite. Okay, well... We're not at basic, and we're not at... We're in the middle. Okay. We're, in the, we're in the one that they give you for 200 it's a $250 a year license for education, where I think it'd be like four or $500, it's like half price, so. All right, so does the survey capture who we want to take it? So the, what type of student are you is? You'll need to switch to camera. No. Or switch to the computer from the camera. So, just remember, is this geared to just our adult high school or is it PSL to our students who are tutoring? Or? I think that's the bigger question that we want to uh, we want to ask too is who who do we want to take? So, to me, we run the first place. I think that I I think we need to start with would be somebody who's in a class. ESL or face-to-face -face class. That's the first group I think you'd want the information from. Then I think the next group would be the independent learners. So people are in learning centers. I don't, tutoring, normally if you're in tutoring, you're already in something else. So I don't see them as being a target. But like I was telling Brandy earlier, you know, Dan has some good feedback, but I think he's looking for some things specific to either his class or this location. Mm -hmm. So, there's kind of two ways that I'm processing that idea. One would be is you ask these same these same questions, and then add additional questions on, like if you want something specific for your class. The problem with that is is when it comes to data compiling, if it's a separate survey, those first initial questions have to be re brought back in, or Everybody gives the same the same survey, and if you want additional questions as an instructor items, then you give a second or a separate piece of that. And that could potentially, you know, if you have them do this on computer, and you have them do that on paper or something, I don't know, something like that. I lean more towards that option just because then we get data from across all points at once. So we can look at things from, because it looks, you've got it broken down by location. So when we pull this data, you'd be able to look at, okay, so the, the responses who said this location, these are the responses versus globally, this is what the responses are. Mm -hmm. And then, so this is the, the, what type of student are you? I would think that they would know this, but would we have any problems with somebody not knowing? You know, there Would it be better to say what program what are what program are you working in? But that's not the way I say it because it answers proposition. Instead of what type of student are you? What what are you what are you here to work on? Mm -hmm. I said diploma, adult diploma, improving my English skills, and then other. Tell me the drop. You show me the drop down. Yeah, right now be those four. Right that here. are listed there. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Sorry. That, that's right there on the screen. No. <laughs> Randy, you just got it up as the edit. Thank yeah, you. I have it up as the edit version. Because <laughs> that'll be, I'm trying to think in my head, 
from, and since we don't have an ESL teacher who's looked at this yet, when we try to do these in the past, their concern is always making sure that whatever is there is understandable. Mm -hmm. From a book, and I know you've looked at that mm -hmm. with your background too. But I know that when if they look at that, that's what we'll get feedback from them looking at that. And then the second question. Can we go back to that? Yeah, sure. I think sometimes. I think maybe for the Kirkwood Adult High School, I would put Kirkwood Adult High School diploma okay. because I think they they kind of lump adult high school with high set together. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And I and I did show it to Sierra yesterday to get her feedback because she was she did oh, Okay. She said the only thing that was missing at that point was the book based courses. Because she did her independent study. So I won't add diploma in Pat. That's a great okay. idea. And then Question two. What? <laughs> I it, sometimes I think that computers are too smart. What type of classes were you enrolled, and then they can select all that apply here? Would you want to put that in parentheses yeah. afterwards? And maybe change it to what type of classes did you are are you taking? Because we would. This isn't the idea. Of this is to give it during. Sometime during an eight-week block. Okay. My preference would be like week six, towards the end. Mm -hmm. um, Did I miss anything? Have a good appointment. Oh, I was. Oh, that's on class. Do you want to break it down by all those? Well, I think that different instructors use different things for different yeah. reasons. Uh, even if they're doing a face-to-face -face class. Well, I did very good. If they have all that applied, right. so they, they could be in a face-to-face -face class, but still using like essential edge. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm all my other, would you want to, we could use this for pathways. We want to just do that as a separate standalone. We could. And not keep it in there. Because I think they already do something for, there's an evaluation they do at the end. Right, that's for the, that's the teachers to the students. Oh, got it, okay. They say, you met expectations, you exceeded expectations, you need improvement. Okay. I'm not, that would be the only thing is if we're looking at this being more long term. I mean, if we wanted to shorten it down, we could just say face to face online classes, book based classes. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm want. I'm I'm wondering, and that'd be good feedback from a larger group. Because I'm not, I'm not sure that they'll remember what. Yeah, I'm which thinking, ones they're enrolled in. They I should. That's what I'm thinking too. That they, they should. Like something online, I don't know what it's called. Well, and you know, how many times do I get a phone call that says, well, I'm enrolled in an online class. Which one? Okay, you know what type of online class you're doing? No. No. Do you know what program you're doing? Are you doing high school or are you doing high school diploma? Then I can usually get them to the right, right. place. But. Um, I think we might get better. You can break the data down better with more pieces and see which is more effective. Mm -hmm. the, the only what you'll run into though with that, unless it's separated out, is because we have it just check all that apply. If I check them in a face to face class and I'm an Aztec and I really like Aztec, but I hated my own my face to face class, breaking it down by those bigger categories, we won't get we won't be able to tell by looking at this in the end whether or not that particular one's working unless you have them answer these Likert scales for each one. Yeah, and I don't want to get into that. No. So, so I think we just do the three. Then. I think if you did it broader. You may, what about adding a fourth to just as I worked in a learning center with an instructor? Okay. Just if, if we're using this as an outlying site, 
I might not. If I'm working on high set, I might just come in and work. I might come in and work Wednesdays with Jackie on mm -hmm. on a Common Core book. Yeah. Where is good? Then we can break it down. And I don't know if I missed anybody. Oh, we're gonna test my map. Okay. Um, Gary. Okay. Here in town. Yes. You know, we're not using the corrections, are we? Okay. No, because they can't go online to take it anyway. Okay. Um, so we go to Vinton. We've got Watch Monticello, Tipton, Iowa City, so, Down. Yeah, there was another one. Do we want to call them what? The college in person, for instance, the Benton Center is Benton, Benton County, County, Cedar County, probably. Will they know that? I they should. <laughs> okay, so Benton County, Cedar County, and the other Jones counties. County, Washington County, Iowa County, Bell Plain is Tippy Mansfield. All right. Would you want to say where did you take your courses? Is that a sign up? Sure. And if they're confused, maybe you could like for the Benton County Center, you could put Benton in parentheses or something. So. I don't. Mm -hmm. But and we only have the Iowa Works Cedar Rapids is the only place we right. have. Yep. Okay. Because the proximity is so close enough. I would say that you wouldn't have. No, I don't think. So. And if we do, you go back and you always know, added it. But there's there's not much room at the workforce office there. They really don't even have a classroom. So. So Dan's other suggestion was to move the safety question to the end on this one, but. Oh, just the order. Yeah. Um. And I think that his. You know, day and evening suggestion. Dan sent us a message chat that says, Randy, I can't get there in time today. I thought, oh, I thought and always have thought that even individual teachers should give out end of class evals to students. That's what this is for. It is common in all other courses on campus and it provides feedback to improve. I did think it would be helpful to indicate in the roll down menu, I usually attend evening or day classes. You could do a skip if you, this has skip logic built in. Mm -hmm. So if you go back to question three, if they choose a location, let's let's like say here, mm -hmm. you should be if you were to add question four, four and three, right. in one of those, you should be able to build. We should be able to build the skip logic in that if you would pick here, it would give you the next question to ask if it's day or night. Okay. It's supposed to be able to do that. It, well, it says it. I've gotten that I've gotten skip logic to work on it. Okay. So right. So it'd be a thing for you to test. <laughs> so it would just be add a question four. Right. And then you won't see if you don't answer that it'll skip right to that one, to your okay. Likert scale. And if you would answer if you'd answer Cedar Rapids if you'd answer Cedar Rapids as your response on three, it'll give you you could then have a hey, Robert, day or night. Hey. Do you want us to catch you up? Oh, that's okay. I, I can catch up afterwards. Oh, well, I it's just us anyway. Oh, okay, yeah. Pat was in and gave some good feedback, too. We were just talking to Dan, and Dan can't come in this afternoon. Okay. Until when he, so he sent notes. Yeah. His suggestion was if we could separate this out by time of day, at least in this building. Mm -hmm. We were just talking about there should be a way in SurveyMonkey with the level mm -hmm. we have to put a skip logic question in that if you picked here as your location, we could then ask if you were in day or evening class. Yeah. And then we're just down to the, um, the Likert scale. And his other suggestion was to move the safety question to the end of the, yeah. the line. But it, like, I was just putting stuff in yeah. to get yeah. back to yeah. the point. I mean, it's a class time. We have ability of instructor and advisor. Content. 
And I, I'm thinking that maybe orientation to the program should maybe go first. Because isn't that going to be something that we're going to have to track for WIOA? Just customer satisfaction with that type of stuff? Probably. But I don't know if you'd want to put, I don't know if it needs to be in this one. Okay. We have that end of your end when you're finishing up survey that we have uh -huh. students to take, and that really gets into those questions. Okay. Because to me, this one's more of class. Okay. That's the idea behind this is to have a class survey that you can give at the end. So, like I said, somewhere between like week six, seven, eight that you would give. So, I don't know if you need it there. And then I don't know if you saw the additional one that I added this morning was convenience of scheduling taking tests for like classes grow. Okay. Because the other thing you might, we might want to do on the like group. Mm -hmm. Is this put a not applicable? Because that way, if I'm thinking if we use this program wide mm -hmm. and there's something on here like that one, they may, if they don't look at it, they might pick that as the not or convenience of class time. Uh, the big places have class time. Right. I'm well, maybe we would ask it. Maybe we skip it. We could try to skip logic over that if it's one of the outlines. I don't know if you can. I don't know if you'd have to. I'll have to try. You can try. I don't with skip logic. I don't know if you can get into like your like in here. Uh -huh. I don't know if you can get into which ones will show and which ones won't based on a prior answer. Usually, it's the whole question. It's, if you answer this, then you get this whole question next. And you'd still want if we we wouldn't want to do two separate boxes of these. Unless you wanted to look at, if you said you were at a place that had classes, mm -hmm. then you use this, take it this one. If you're at a place where there's just learning center, based on that response, then they get a set. Well, we can try. I can see what so you, it give you a chance to play. <laughs> well, it's kind of a quiet time right now, so I would have a stopover and if no, yeah, that's slow and focus. The, we have that lull until yeah, about Thanksgiving, yeah. and then everybody decides they're going to get their classes done yeah. for Christmas. Yes. Yep. <laughs> and then January to June is just. Yep. Yeah. So. So no orientation to the program. I don't. I don't out. think it's necessary. Um. So convenience of class time, availability of instructors, classroom content. Safety and security of building and classroom, staff and instructor attitude, use of technology, convenience of scheduling, taking tests, and overall satisfaction. Is it short enough? I don't think you want to go more into what's here. It's too one page back to back to answer it. I think if we move on to a third page, we won't get answers. Personally. Well, that's what I think you too, but I'm saying is that should we make it shorter, shorter? And to me, the goal of the this spot down here in the bottom is to be able to see if, if student needs are being met. Because okay. I look at this and say, of these questions, what's going to be meaningful as an, for an instructor? So, so does it answer the who we want to say to? I mean, safety and security is important because if students don't feel safe, we need to know that. And I would agree if Dan goes to the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I guess that's the question. What's our, to back it up, what's our purpose? Other than we've set it as a goal, and it's kind of, we don't have anything now, and most other programs on campus do have something they give them. What's our what's our bigger what's the big purpose with having this? Well, we want some to, of it probably is learner persistence mm -hmm. because we're trying to increase that, right. and the only way to increase that is to know what we're doing well and know what we're not right. doing well. And we want to be able to say that on a like scale of one to five, our students say that they are, you know, 
their satisfaction with the program is 4.74. And you're going to have the outliers anyway. Right. You know, you're going to have the ones that never wanted to be here in the first place, and they're here because their probation officer says they have to be here. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm looking at it like from an instructor, so if either you or Rob, what, what stems in here are things that would be helpful as an instructor if you got that back and it was at a, it was lower than you expected. What would those things, what are those things you would want to know about so that you could improve what you're doing in your classroom? Mm -hmm. So. Well, and I don't think, I think that these things kind of help. Right. Like the convenience of class time, you know, if we, we've looked at the data, we've tracked the data to see when we should offer class right. time. So if somebody comes back and says, well, this didn't work for me, mm -hmm. then, you know, as the economy shifts and as everything right. shifts, maybe we do have to adjust. Yep. The only thing that I see that I would like more clarification is, you know, the attitude. It's, that's kind of an arbitrary type of yeah. term. Well, so, I'm, and I'm, I'm splitting hairs, so throw something at me if you want. In all seriousness, too. Would it be better to have these as like statements? So, and I don't know. And that's, I'm going to look at this from your ESL background that I don't have. I mean, I look at the first one, I go, could we say it? Classes were held at a time that fit in my schedule. Yeah. Or is that too much? Would that, is that something that's not, somebody reads that they're not going to understand? I think that they would understand that better probably than convenience of class. Time. And go with and, and we do agree, disagree. Okay. You know, strongly agree, agree, neutral, mm -hmm. somewhat disagree, completely disagree. Uh, instructors were available to answer questions or provide help when needed. Because that would get into availability. The class covered information that was, I want to use the word relevant, but I think ESL students won't get that. I think so, useful might be better. Yeah, that was useful. Um, I will use, I will use the skills taught mm -hmm. to the, to seek a job, to mm -hmm. get a job, to you know, I can go back and do Cla classes or con things we covered in class helped me my goal, my learning goals. I, I think we might, if we go that route, to me that gives, that might give us better details to be able to look at. So if we come back and we start to drill into this and we see, we, won't, we don't want student names, um, unless they want to give them. Um, but if we start to drill this down and we would look at, I'm an ESL student coming in the mornings and I'm getting, we're getting high we'll go with the negative route. We get things that are most strongly disagreeing on this content area. Well, that's something that then as a teacher, I can look at that and say, okay, well, I'm not, something's not working right because the, the students are saying this is a good time to come to class, mm -hmm. but I'm not getting what I need. So what do we need to do? Or on the other hand, they're really, really satisfied with the approach. Then, we, then as an instructor, I would know I don't need to change up what I'm doing because the students are saying that's working. Mm -hmm. Um, so staff and instructor attitude. Well, and I just circled that said it's too arbitrary. We need something more concrete yeah. to, I, and I kind of traded whole pieces of other surveys right, that were saw. like asking the same question 10 times. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever looked at the, I've never looked at the class climate stuff. Um, I have with Todd's group. They have something in there. I mean, to me, the idea there is, is the instructor, the instructor showed that they cared. Mm -hmm. That's what I think the idea is there. Mm -hmm. or the instructor created a, a this is too ranky, positive learning environment. I knew what you were going to say. <laughs> and I was like, I don't want to say it that way because that's too, that's used way too often. I think the instructor seemed to care. Yeah. About Me and my needs. I think that we have some good, good ways to go now. 
On your question about who wants to take it, that the the uh, question number two kind of helps because I was thinking it was just for in class, but this is going to be for online classes too. Wow, well, and we looked at that. You want to scroll back up? What we were discussing when Pat was in here too is we thought we might just go to four of those instead okay. of all of them and have you know face to face classes, book based classes, online classes. And just coming, I come in for the help at the center. Because if we looked at the county sites, yeah. they may not have a class the student might just come in. Like if I work on high set, I'm going to come in and work with Charlie and someone, mm -hmm. potentially. Because we, we break it down by, if we were to break it down by all these, yeah. anyway, if you pick more than one, we wouldn't be able to correlate it back to the bottom responses anyway. Because right. if I'm doing two of them, I don't know what we wouldn't be able to determine okay. which one they're asked they're giving feedback about. Okay. And we talked about changing the what type of student are you to what what are you here to study, study or do? You know, learn English, get my high set, get my high school level. Because mm -hmm. we wouldn't do this for transfer no. Yeah. Not unless you wanted to, mm -hmm. but that's up to you. Oh, <laughs> There's enough other I tried it one year. Years ago, I did a student satisfaction survey. Years ago. I did the just the foreign language classes a couple years ago. But our response rate wasn't very good, and it wasn't done randomly. So, oh, our, our response rate for the the foreign language classes was was really good. That was when we had like five Spanish students and Gabby. Yeah. Yeah, no, Sandy Gibby had just quit, and I took it on, and, <laughs> you know oh, and I'm like, did I get paid for this outside? <laughs> this is a lot more work than I anticipated. Do we want to have a comment box in the bottom? I think so. I think that was one of um, Pat's suggestions earlier was like your comment box. Just, and it's optional. Please provide any additional information you'd like to share. some people are really good what I from the, the other survey I think, oh you're in there so you could if you want to go up to my surveys um, look at the high school that's an old one where are the more recent ones I don't know is that oh, the you know, you're, in, you're in the free account oh that's why. That would be why. Okay. <laughs> well, use it here. I'll give you the sign out. Okay. I think. Oh, it's got to be based on when those were from. Okay. So sign in and use um, M K I E L K U at Kirkwood.edu. I think this is it. And then it's resource capital R 1030. I have like another. That was, but that was when you, maybe the college didn't have it when you first we didn't got it. We have it. No. So now, see this, that's why. Use this one because you'll get all the good, get okay. all the good stuff with this one. So, um, yeah, look at that one. That one. This one? one. Nope. That one. This one. Yep. And then go just go to analyze results on this one. This is the one we have for students to take when they finish out. So you'll be able to see what's there, but if you scroll down, there's, you know, which, how did you get started? So I strongly disagree about orientation, that's good. But then I, this is what, what I've done with these, just please provide feedback that you have. Nobody listed anything on that one. Um, if you keep going, there's some questions at the end of the survey, or we actually ask them to. Okay, so these are all filled with that skip logic. So if you answer yes to this, then you get this question. If you don't, you go to question this next question. If you answer yes, then you get this question. So that's what, and here you can build all that in really easily. Um, 
So nobody who's done those things face to face. So here's here's what we everybody gets asked. These are some of those learning hours learning centers open meet my needs. What we find with that question when we did a survey back when we were at Lincoln years ago, mm -hmm. we asked about should we change our hours of operation. We came back with a no because everybody who took the survey were the student, existing students. And it worked for them. So they just affirmed, you know. But then the question was, is, is that really right? Or is it the audience you're surveying that already it's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy in that sense? Um, so down below, we keep going. This is a longer, this is like 20 questions. But here, what do you most like about it? This is the one I like. My, my personal favorite question is 17. Like, what have you learned about yourself as a result of studying? It's kind of nice to see the, what they say there. <laughs> I'm a <So>, like procrastinator. <laughs> yeah. And then this one's good too. Although, this so far this year, we have no constructive feedback on that one. But sometimes you'll get some good, sometimes you get some really good responses from students mm -hmm. in that. So. But anyway, some, I mean, it could be something like that. As a feedback, you yeah. could you could say, please identify something you've learned as a reason. You know, what's something you've learned about yourself from taking this class? What's something that? But if it's going to get us too many pages, well, I think you know, if we do this as the program wide survey, mm -hmm. then if instructors want to dive deeper, they always can give their own. Yep. That was what we Dan had mentioned in his comments too. That was my 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 thought was there's two ways to go about it. Poor Brandy's heard this now four times. <laughs> you could give you could tack questions onto this existing survey and do it yourself, but then the problem we run into is we can't aggregate all the data you get. Or you give this survey and then give a separate survey for those additional questions that you as an instructor would want. My preference would be the second yeah. one, just because then all this it's, gets it's put together. The purpose of having the purchased yeah. survey monkey to not use the analytics. Right. Well, we can't dive into it. I mean, I, I worked the two, two hour. Uh, tonight I have to go get the survey results from a parent survey we did at Gabby and Joe's school. And we used the free version because I'm like, I don't feel ethically I can use my nice big version of this, but you'll do all this work for me. So, uh, and I could ask, ask more questions. but. We were talking about one of the big bulk of it was about some fundraising stuff. And as I looked at the data, the big picture shows that we should do a couple things with this. But then I went, we asked the question of how you use that current survey, like your frequency of use. Well, if we want to really do this right, what I need to know is the people who don't use it, if they said they would start to use this fundraiser if we did something different. So I went through. I didn't think, goodness, there were only 56 responses. But I went through all 56 and encoded all those out. So then you could say, okay, the non-user group says if we would do this, six, you know, seven out of the 15 of them would start to use it. You know, with this, that's what we would want to find out. Mm -hmm. Having a big picture, we can look program-wide, but we can dive into this and go, okay, so, because I would want it, Morning, if I was morning, morning classes at K Life, what's the same? Mm -hmm. Or if I'm an ESL teacher in an Iowa City in the evening, I would want. Here's what I want to know. Okay, I can pull this out. It's not exactly my class, but it's at least the same group of students. I think so. I think I think we have some good edits, and I'll try to get that done before I leave tomorrow. And then, when do we want to have it? Kind of more finalized. I think if, as long as we have it read at this point, tell me what, Robin, what do you think too? Would you want this for this block, or do we want to start it where we use it spring block? I'm going to guess since we have six weeks, it should be enough time to be able to use it this time. Because if we could use it to the, this and then the two spring ones, that would give us enough. The goal this year is to get a benchmark and benchmark it to say this is what overall we're seeing. So then next year we can try to look at our goal would be is to increase it by meet or exceed. 
what we had from last year. So, so by the by Thanksgiving, basically. Yep. As long as we had it by December first. So we go till the seventeenth, so really we wouldn't need it until the third. But we could uh, we should probably look to deliver it and it's the seventeenth. Like the fourteenth. This week of December seventh. I'm doing my math calc. I think it was right. A, a, about right. Second week of December. <laughs> um and our Tuesday, Thursday schedule is filled for like the next like, <laughs> two weeks. Yep. Three weeks and or two weeks and I'm gone for a week. So I'm okay if if you're able to get edits on this, I could add this. To Try to add it to the Zoom meeting. Okay. Because at the Zoom meeting at the end of the month, my I want about 15 minutes for the folks who went to the writing workshop to talk about what was at the writing workshop. Then my goal would be to have. Oh, you know what? No, if yeah, as long as we would have it something by the end of the month, because we could talk about this on the 30th. Okay. It might be better face to face and just say, hey, one of the things that we want to be able to do is to be able to have a, a student survey that's program wide. So it's broad enough because we have we should have nearly everybody there. We're gonna take ten minutes to take a look at this. That might be better than that. Will that interfere with end of ten minutes? Okay. I don't think so. Okay. So yeah, by the third thirtieth should be. That no gives me a couple more weeks besides. But that would be the Tuesday before that. But we already, I already want to talk about marketing stuff in there. What we currently do for outreach. Oh, so it's tied right into that. Yeah. So we want. To, Kim wants to look at that. Kim is asking everybody to look at that as a big picture. How do we do outreach to make programs more build up awareness of programs as a whole? So there's a set of questions that we're all supposed to ask and then bring it back at the beginning of the month. And I'm thinking on that one, I want everybody involved, not just full-time groups because there's stuff that somebody could do at a, at a county center in terms of outreach so well I mean like even like the difference between here and Iowa City Christina's really good about picking up the phone and calling yep I'm, and I'm not saying that we're not but she's just of that mindset like that's technology's her, not her thing but that's her, call them. that's her preference <laughs> communication. So, but it's to talk about what are we already doing for outreach and what could we maybe there are things that we do differently if we had some different, if you had different tools that, that help you out, do outreach better. So I learned a whole bunch about Facebook pages last week mm -hmm. and why they're not as effective as they were two years ago. Because they changed their analytics on them. They want you to buy boosts for your posts, for your pages if you're an organization. And a lot of kids don't want to do it anymore because their parents are on it. Yeah. <laughs> But like even you know, it used to be if you had a page, every time you put something on it, anybody who liked your page saw it. Now it's frequency is about once per week. If you post something, it'll show up in your feed. Now unless you pay for it to be put in the feed. Yeah, I have to start blogging. So I have to post on the blog. I tweet it out, and then I post it on Facebook. But I'm lucky if Marshall sees it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just it's all unless unless you go into like page and move it to say that it moves to the top of your feed, you don't know you won't always see them. So like IV, I now have theirs come up to the top of my news feed because if they have a special for the day or something, I won't see them. I've missed stuff otherwise. So all kinds of other stuff get to it before it's the yeah. So but I didn't know any of that, that, that had, all that had changed because one of the things we've been talking about as an admin team is we should open up the Facebook page and let more people contribute to it and put stuff on it. But based on all that, it's not worth that amount of time because the likelihood of people seeing it won't be very high. And, and even though I can, like I have my Twitter account connected to my Facebook account, it still doesn't boost it. Mm -hmm. Well, and I, I've got a Twitter account, but I keep getting this message to confirm my Twitter account, but it's so tiny I can't even read it. So, <laughs> so I, 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 
I'm a, I have Twitter, but I'm not a big user of Twitter. Yeah, I, I only started it out of Koi because mm -hmm. you said that they had put something on and I wanted to see it. And yeah. I, I never found it. And like I said, I've gotten this email that, to confirm it, and I can't read it, so I can't confirm it. <laughs> I've done used it more in conferences as a back channel than any. Well, and if you follow the professional learning communities that use Twitter, what Dave said is that it's a really great professional development tool because yeah. you can tweet out things as they're happening. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was great when I was at the AEL conference that I could, like I tweeted out a bunch of stuff about learning persistence. Mm -hmm. And then I was able to remember a lot more. Yep. So. Okay, so we'll have it ready to go before the end of yeah, I think October and then. Well, we can show everybody on the Zoom meeting on the last Thursday. We'll just say that we're working on this and we're going to share it Friday. And then the, the idea would be is that you give this to your students in if you're in an eight-week session, you give this to them week six or seven. And otherwise, you should, if you have existing students, you would ask them to give this to you once more. So if they're a learning center student doing an adult diploma, you would try to catch them once per quarter. And if you wanted to say it's a two-week window of time, you could give it within the same two weeks. Mm -hmm. So the same two weeks of time, you try to give this survey to as many students as you can. That would be the easiest way to do I it. I think that makes a lot more sense than trying to catch everybody as they walk in the door. Yep. I mean, I don't know. Nope. I think you just say like this. Always. Between December, it would be November 30th and December 7th, whatever, the end of that week, the 10th. Mm -hmm. During those two weeks, we try to get this survey either in your classes or you give it to students when they come in. And we pick the next two weeks for survey time. These are the two weeks that you really make sure that your students get this survey data. So the class ones are pretty easy. You can give them during class. The ones that are for the yep. online and the book based, yep. it's just as they come in. Basically. Right, and I think well, with the online courses, Kate should be able to, or like even an app in Apex. We have the announcement feature. You'd have the announcement feature. The Apex would be a challenge though, because then you'd have a whole bunch of your students taking. We don't want them. But not necessarily because I can post it just to. The HSCP yeah, classes. classes. Okay. And Gary's the only one right now that's using them. Okay. So. So you could do that. You could put like in those other ones. You could put an announcement out and do it that way for those online students to send them. And then I think the other here it would just be on the five computers in the learning center. We bookmark. We bookmark the link. Put it on the desktop. Double click on it. Just double click on that link. Take the survey when you're done. Go ahead and close it. We'll just make sure. We, when you when we get this set up, we'll make sure that the settings say that you can use the same computer more than once. Okay. By the way, it defaults to once per computer address. Right. So. Yeah. But that would work. That we had two week windows. We'll just build two week windows. The last two week six and seven of a term of a class block of our mm -hmm. survey okay. open for survey. Because, and I wonder if there's a way to do that. It might even be something um, we could put in. Go all, go all the way up to the top and go to, um, I don't know if you can collect, go under collect response tab and then click the web link there. Either that or the open. Um, you can open and close the survey. So that's where you do the editing. Um, click go one up above our multiple responses. So that's where you can set it so that it can be the same computer as more than once. Um, check advanced, show advanced options. That's the only place where it might be. Cut off the time. time. Yep. If you click there, you see what it says. So you can close the collector. So I don't think. So you could set a date when it doesn't let you take any more in. Maybe. So that would be probably the end of the major. Right, you could do that if you wanted to. Or if you only wanted to, like, defer, you could have this open for those couple weeks. Mm -hmm. So then you could say, no more results after December 10th. Go in and edit, then leave it alone. 
then you could go in and edit it to whatever the next one would be when you send it out. I think if you pushed, if you clicked on, it'll ask you for a date. I've, I've never, I haven't looked at the advanced options. My guess is there. I was gonna say it'll tell you date and time. You can shut it off. So <laughs> use use this one. This has got the this more has all the features, features that, that you wanted. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> if you if like well here. Go up to my surveys again. We can look at it. I haven't looked at this, but we may as well because I think I have it set for instant results. Just look at the top one. So, like, the first thing you can find is how many responses did you get each day? We've gotten five today. Yep. So, 21 total. Um, then you can go up to analyze. Analyze is the nice tab. But you can export this out so you can export it in a PDF format and then you would get. All this information. Well, this is looking. That's interesting. I didn't think it'd go that way. I thought it'd go with option two. I think with what Sean said, where you know they're probably not going to pass the test that they haven't done in a long time. That makes yeah. a lot of sense. There will be some financial consequences. I I thought it'd go the other way though. It's a lot easier. Yeah. First, so. Well, the distance learning students are going to have that option. I think that most of them will have to start doing the homework over because they're not going to pass the test. No. So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff you can look at in here. I like this. I only use the free version. And it was this is ours, so you can anytime you want to use it for something here. I think the my the username and password is floating everywhere <laughs> around here. So but I mean that's I'd rather see it used than not being used if there's other purposes to use it for. I mean we've done surveys for Todd. And I use I use the college, the college is fund one account for it. So that way we're not using adult debt funds. So that way if you want to use it for anything, it's mm -hmm. open to you. Okay. Cool. Well, we are actually done before too. Yeah. Yeah.